This is a Tesla Model Y Performance and I just sold it. There's some things I like about it, but a whole lot more that I absolutely do not. I gotta come clean with you. I've had this car for almost two years now and put a little over 25,000 miles on it. This is my wife's daily. I don't want it to be like an anti-Tesla video. My wife and I have been generally happy with some of the stuff with this. But there's also a whole lot of things which are just not okay. So this is specifically a performance model. And if I'm gonna say some positive stuff first, the performance is number one, two, and three on my list. Now, obviously all electric vehicles are somewhere between quick and oh my God, fast. And this is a lot closer to the holy that this thing is fast. All right, gang, you ready to feel like what performance feels like? Oh, yep, there it is. Oh, yeah. Yep. But that's one of the big advantages of this, of just like being able to just instantly like, go, okay. It's just right there, it's so easy. Oh, I'm not gonna do anything. <laughs> I told you. I love gas powered performance vehicles. I, I absolutely love them. And I know that their time is running short. Right. But if this is the future, which I absolutely think it is, it's not all bad. And the thing is, it's actually gotten better over the time I've owned it. So a few months ago, they added a track mode, which seems a little bit ridiculous for a small SUV. But not only can you take it on the track, you actually can put it in drift mode. I have literally slid this thing around with a baby seat in the back. Mind you, the baby seat was empty at that particular time. But like the performance you get, and something which looks so, I don't say bad, but come on, no one looks at this and thinks it's cool, right? <laughs> While I have a lot of issues with some of the build quality of the vehicle, the fact that this is electric means there's so many fewer parts and that 25,000 miles in, I have not had to take this to a dealer once. The only times I've had to use Tesla service was to install the garage door opener, which stupidly is not included from the factory. And I had to replace one tire because I got a nail in it. That's it. On top of the fact that you have a decent sized trunk, there's also a lot of extra space back here. So not only are there these very sort of deep sort of pockets on the sides, but you can go even lower. Look at that. <laughs> As you can see, there's a lot of space in the back of the Model Y, and that's not counting the frunk. Quite possibly the best feature of a Tesla though is one of the absolute most obvious. The fact that superchargers are I'm not gonna say everywhere, but far more common than the other more generic EV chargers such as Electrify America and EVgo, that's a big win. But more importantly than that, Tesla superchargers are dead reliable. If you've ever heard anyone talk about Teslas, it's always superchargers, superchargers. Now, yes, superchargers are currently being opened up to other vehicles, but the problem is that's a slow process. I wouldn't be surprised if it takes years before most superchargers have any kind of access for other EVs. Um, I like my fake carbon fiber spoiler that's falling off now. Well, again, not my car anymore, so not my problem. Let me explain to you how a door handle works on a Tesla Model Y. It's nowhere near as simple as it should be. Due to aerodynamics, they've got a very flush door handle, which means you always have to push it on the side to open it. A little bit weird, but fine once you get used to it. The issue is unlocking the vehicle. You have two ways in. First of all, you can use the little credit card-like key to tap on the B pillar and will unlock the car. Or what the most convenient way of doing it is, is to use your smartphone and Bluetooth. And sometimes this works, but most of the time it doesn't. And especially when you have your hands full and the car decides that it doesn't want to open up for you, it's really not very fun. And this happens all the time. That's what I'm talking about. But watch this, I'll pull my phone out. You see that? And that is just the beginning of the quality issues that you could expect when you buy yourself a Tesla. A couple of months after purchasing the vehicle, both of the little covers for your like seat controls came loose. So I have electrical tied both of them in place. There has been the entire time I've owned this car, this panel right here. Yeah, so you notice how this doesn't go stay flat. Um, so not only has that always dragged, but you might see a little bit of tumbleweed. Uh, driving back from the Bay Area like six months ago, I hit a tumbleweed and it got trapped under there and now it doesn't rattle anymore, but there's just permanent tumbleweed stuck in my underbody panel. The build quality issues extend far beyond just the exterior too. Now that's probably not a big surprise. Almost everyone who owns a Tesla complains about this and I think it's completely warranted. Now there's the obvious stuff like panel gaps, which for a $60,000 vehicle are not okay. But then there's lots of other things, right? So the speaker that is on the right door, passenger door, it's just not screwed in right. So it's got like a gap on the bottom, it rattles sometimes. Then there are things like the roof, 
which while it is nicely tinted and I actually think it looks nice, uh, there's like some sealant that's up here that they just didn't take off and I can't get in there to like scrape it out. I know this is very easy to come off as someone who's just complaining about, oh, it's not very nice and so minimalistic. And yes, I like this display. This is the only thing I like in the interior, besides the fact that it's got a decent amount of space. The fact that I have no gauge cluster here is annoying. The fact that I have to go here and touch and move everything around anytime I want to do anything with the AC, very annoying. The lack of physical controls have been taken to an absolutely ridiculous minimal level. And that's not even counting the ride quality. Remember all that great stuff I was saying about the performance and everything? Well, oftentimes when it comes to a performance vehicle, you're sacrificing, right? You know, you want to get more performance out of it, well, you can give up a little bit of ride quality. Well, I think the Tesla engineers heard that and they go, performance, and they dialed it all up because this thing rides like bad words I'm not going to say on camera. Like, yes, it's got 21 inch wheels, kind of stupid. And yeah, it's got big, sticky summer tires. Something to consider with an electric car is that electric cars are heavy. Below you, below the floor, are like a thousand pounds of batteries or something, right? So it carries its weight low. But that's still a lot of weight that the suspension has to deal with. And that pair with the low profile tires means that if you're going on even a moderately bumpy road in this performance, it's just uncomfortable. And if you're in the back seat, there have been moments where you hit like a little bump on the freeway and you'll like your butt will come off the back seat. Even something like in a Hyundai Ionic or cars that cost half the price have much nicer feeling touch points, much more comfortable to ride in. This feels like a real area where Tesla just don't spend money. When you look at Tesla as a company, they spend next to nothing on research and development compared to a legacy automaker. Now that makes sense when you sell four models and essentially almost all their sales are of the Model 3 and the Model Y. If you've got a good thing, just make more of them, right? Especially when you make a tidy profit on every single model sold. Significantly more than most other automakers, especially in the electric space, because pretty much everyone outside of Tesla lose money on every electric car they sell or barely break even. But now that the supply has caught up to the demand, Tesla, while they still want to heavily invest in infrastructure and build more factories, battery plants, and all that kind of stuff, they're faced with a difficult choice. They have an absolute sky high stock price. And to keep that actually propped up, they need to continue to build and to grow and to churn and really just try to own the electric space. But because the demand is sort of leveled out and they have to keep building more and more factories and infrastructure and whatnot, they really only have one choice cut prices, and they have absolutely done that. So the car that I bought back in 2021 cost $61,000. A year later, they had raised the price all the way up to $70,000. But now that supply is cut up to demand, they've had to cut it drastically. It went from 70 grand in a few short months to $53,000. That is a price cut that you just don't see in the auto industry, short of like some sports car that no one wants that Oh, eventually it will be worth a lot of money that I would never buy or anything. And what that really means is that Tesla are aggressively trying to push everyone out. Think about it. Tesla, while they are a very valuable company, still make a very small amount of vehicles compared to Ford or Toyota. And with everyone in the auto industry trying to bring out electric vehicles to compete with Tesla, no one's able to do that at a profit. So if Tesla can slash their prices and really get everyone out competed, like it makes sense. But you know what also would make sense? if they made a new car or I don't know, stopped removing features from the few cars that they sell right now. So for example, with this vehicle, I ordered it, I believe it was April, 2021. It arrived in June. And in that two month time period, not only did they remove the lumbar adjustment on the passenger seat, which is dumb, but okay. And they also removed the radar. So this is a Tesla vision car. So it entirely uses the cameras instead of the radar. Now are either of those a big problem? Not really, but the car didn't get any cheaper for it. Tesla made some more money, but I didn't save anything. So fast forward a couple of years, they've removed all kinds of stuff. They've removed one of the speakers from the stereo on a new vehicle. Uh, they've removed like the parking sensors. I just, there's so many things that it feels like they're constantly trying to cost cut and save here and there that I'm like, ah, aren't this car supposed to be better? There are a lot of great things about it. There are a lot of things that I do like, and there's some things I'm gonna miss. The fact that there are so many build quality issues, so many like refinement issues, it just, it's not it for me anymore. No, my friends, my new vehicle is a little bit more controversial. <laughs> that is a tight one. Whoa, Austin, chill out. 